a bigger issue and i think he is spicing it up and that will be start after the next session before that jhasa i think we should not wait for a perfect moment but take a moment and make it perfect there cannot be a better moment to call our patent and mentor dr s s jha to say a few words before lunch and dr anil arora lecture patelar issue will be a nap taking nap removing issue after that i think that's why we have kept it after the lunch thank you so dear master trainers dr nabil ghare from israel dr anil arora dr maheshwari dr rakesh rajput sanjay srivastava dr narendra baidya and our very own organizing chairman dr as prashad vishal agrawal anand nigam and all all the arthroplasty surgeon delegates friends uh i must admit that i have no experience with robotic surgery as such but i have gone into some details of what it is especially for our learning delegates well all of us are aware that continuous learning is an unending process and it is a steep learning curve when it concerns arthroplasty techniques the various challenges facing an arthroplasty surgeon varies from trivial to tricky problems like the knee is not bending properly implant is loose or unstable over time parts of the implant may break or wear out and there may be risk of deep infection well tka is an effective treatment for severe osteoarthritis but despite good survival rates all of us have over emphasized that up to 20% of tka patients are dissatisfied now in a multi centric series of 347 selected patients using various implants only 62% were totally free from pain during gait 35% were pain free while climbing or descending stairs 40% complained when running 48% were declared being very satisfied with the procedure and 68% considered their operated knee to be normal for their age friends before delving into the robotics and its future let us ponder upon a basic question that do we have the right perspective promising new technologies have been developed in knee arthroplasty the new technologies in tka are very attractive and have constantly evolved the limitations persist and could be improved by artificial intelligence and predictive modeling the functional outcomes can improve with their current use the current concepts outcomes and advantages are important to understand along with their limitations well robotics are passive with handheld instruments it could be semi active which uses partial auto haptic arm and it could be active with auto haptic arm there are image free robotics where no pre operative imaging is required whereas there are image based robotics in which ct or x ray based 3d planning is required image based robotics has 3d planning with the aid of computer navigation robotic tools are used for im- for effective cuts imageless robotics use computer navigation through imageless 3d planning with use of robotic tools tools for the affecting the cuts in 3d planning navigation based landmark selection can have less errors most robotic system relies on image based 3d planning most popular is ct based image acquisition all existing systems have this 3d planning the robotic assisted system allow an accurate and reproducible bone preparation due to robotic interface 
with a 3D surgical planning based on pre-operative 3D imaging or not, this is a promising system, nevertheless has been emphasized that it has its own limitation. Well, a study highlights the type of errors made by different trainees and the need to increase the learning curve of such complex procedures by having assistance from advanced technology like PSI and robotic technology. One study was conducted to determine whether the use of a surgical navigation system in total knee replacement enables beginner and intermediate surgeon to achieve clinical patient outcomes as good or as those conducted by expert surgeons in the lo long term. They categorized beginner surgeon is one with no more than 30 previous knee replacement performances. Intermediate surgeon is one with more than 30 but not more than 300 and expert surgeons with more than 300 replacements. They concluded that navigated assisted total knee arthroplasty under expert guidance can be as effective when performed by a beginner or intermediate surgeon as performed by senior surgeons regarding the accuracy of implant positioning, limb alignment and long-term clinical outcome. So friends, robotic assisted Total knee replacement provides improved pre-operative planning and allows the surgeon to select the desired implant position and alignment before making an incision. An intraoperative robotic arm helps the surgeon make precise bone resections which can decrease iatrogenic bone loss and periarticular soft tissue injury compared with conventional TKA. Well, talking about learning curve, with a learning curve of approximately 40 cases, operative times for robotic assisted total knee can become time neutral compared with a surgeon's manual total knee. Robotic total knee should not be looked at as a daunting task for the general orthopedist, but should be seen as an asset in those looking to implement robotic assistance in their practice. Well, to conclude, I would like to say that personalized alignment, personalized implant from available off-the-self imp implants are the two important components of a successful joint arthroplasty. The surgeon must have the freedom of using a system for the surgeon, a system of the surgeon for a patient, and system by the surgeon. I am thankful to all the honored guests, delegates, press, and media. Long live Kanpur Arthroplasty and UP Arthroplasty. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now, and uh, it will be a short, crisp lunch, so we'll come back again. And we'll start with the knee symposium, which is going to be very interesting because in that symposium, you're going to hear why patients are unhappy after knee replacement and what we can do to correct that. So that's a very thought-provoking lecture and you'll have Dr. Anil Arora's talk also. The slides are working now. So I'll be talking of uh, patellar problems in total knee arthroplasty, mainly maltracking because I have only 8 to 10 minutes to speak about it. Here is one patient who had no difficulty in walking, but see the patient is demonstrating something, subluxating patella. He says, when I move it fast, it doesn't subluxate, but when I move it slow, it subluxates, and he had a lot of problem in climbing and climbing says and coming down. So that's the click. So patella issues can jeopardize function and have an unsatisfactory total knee arthroplasty. Now, this was the x-ray. I a pointer mil jata bahut bad hogi. And if you can see on the left side, the patella is subluxed. Now, what we aspire for is this, a centrally lying patella, tracking well. Now, what are the factors for patella maltracking? This could be patient factors, surgical technique, implant positioning, and sometimes poor implant design, where the trochlea is extremely shallow. Previous some design had such. 
What are patient predisposing factors? Low lying patla, patla baha, or pre operative patella, uh, patella subluxation, a valgus deformity, very prone for patella mal tracking when you correct it, hypoplastic lateral femoral condyle, and obese patient. It always gives trouble. Come on, man. Next. Stopped working. I think. And sure. Nothing visible? Yeah, the gentleman knows how to put it. Please. Morphological abnormalities like dysplastic trochlea or thin patella, when you replace it, it becomes thicker. The combined uh, thickness of trochlea and patella becomes more. There can be, there are chances of maltracking or there can be morphological abnormality like bifid patella. These all factors can contribute to a maltracking patella on the table. What are the common causes? The most common cause is improper sizing or positioning or rotation of femoral or tibial component. There could be flawed prosthetic design, soft tissue imbalance, and various patellar issues like asymmetric patellar resection, leading to maltracking of patella, or imbalance, and this undersurfaced area, giving lateral patellar facet syndrome painful on the lateral side. There could be thick composite. You have resected less and put more. It has become quite thick, so there could be maltracking. So of these, and there could be even, you put patella on the lateral side, it should be supramedial on the patella. If you, if you put a component lateral or there is mal rotation of medial dome patella. Of all these factors, most common causes are these ones. Improper sizing or positioning or rotation of femoral tibial component. Now mal tracking patella should be taken very, very seriously because it indicates it's a red flag because it indicates inappropriate component sizing or position, which might give symptoms as well as jeopardize the long-term survival of knee arthroplasty. So it should be taken quite seriously. Now, what are we aspiring for? When we think of femoral component rotation, we all think of putting it parallel to interepicondylar axis. That is the most desirable position of the femoral component. Now, if you are doing Major dissection and taking PCA, posterior condylar axis, as, as your reference. In case of valgus knee in hypoplastic lateral femoral condyle, if you use PCA, you can put your component in internal rotation, femoral component internal rotation, causing patella maltracking. On the other hand, not uncommon in our country, we get severe varus knees who have hypertrophic medial femoral condyle, and there's a thick bone on this inferior aspect. And here, if you use posterior condylar axis, again, you can throw your component into internal rotation. So one has to be very wary of this. So posterior condylar axis is invalid in these two situations where your lateral femoral condyle is hypoplastic or you have a thick and hypertrophic medial femoral condyle. What is desirable? We put our component, patellar component, either central or slightly, low, slightly supramedial, and we remove this bone. How do we check intraoperatively? Going by theory, it is mentioned, it should be rule of no thumb. What is desirable that without holding the patla on the lateral side, it should track well from extension to deep flexion. This was unresurfaced patella. This is what is desirable. And if you have put a patella component, again, it should be sitting nicely, even in deep flexion, throughout range of motion, it should track very well. Now, if you go by Insal, it's, he says that if you follow rule of no thumb always, you tend to overestimate need for lateral release. So what are other methods? You can put a towel clip and then see the tracking. You can put a stitch and then see the tracking. If it is satisfactory, then there is no need for lateral release or doing something else. One more test is described as vertical patella test. You make the patella vertical, bring it medially, and if you are able to bring it to the middle of the trochlea, hopefully your patella will track very, very well. You will not need any release on the lateral side. Now, if 
पटलाइज माल ट्रैकिंग एट द ट्रायल वॉट टू डू फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल डी फेज टू नी के एंड चेक इट मेजोरिटी ऑफ टाइम इल स्टार्ट ट्रैकिंग वेल इफ यूर डन योर जॉब वेल स्टिल अनसेटिस्फैक्ट्री चेक प्लेसमेंट ऑफ फेमोरल एंड टीबल कंपोनेंट्स स्पेशली रोटेशन चेक फॉर पटेलर थिकनेस दैट यू हैव रिसेक्टेड वेल योर पटेलर कट इज सिमेट्रिकल और नो वन कैन फील विद हैंड एंड चेक द पटेलर बटन पोजिशन इफ ऑल इज वेल लाइक इन दिस केस at the time of trial patella was not tracking well and if you see i'll show you the femoral component is flexed this is what dr maheshwari was showing in his talk if it is flexed your patella component will not track very well once you put in extension it it will track very well now mal tracking patella if everything is fine now what to do you have checked everything you are satisfied and components are fine nothing can be much nothing much can be done at that stage so if patella is unresurfaced one can think of doing a lateral partial patellar facetectomy we resect the lateral part and this one such video this is the lateral part with the saw you can resect part of it this will decompress the patella as well as relax the lateral patellar femoral ligament you take the chunk of bone remove it sub periosteally and you remove it sub periosteally now another case where everything has been done but patella is unsatisfactorily tracking nothing much can be done at that stage if it is so think of doing a release majority of people uh, certainly think of doing a release the so called lateral retinacular release which can be done from inside or from outside i have been doing from inside i think majority of us have been doing from inside you gradually try to treat the release you make the lateral structures taut release can be done 1 to 2 cm later to the patellar border you gradually incise synovium capsule retinaculum up to the subcutaneous fat and lateral patellar femoral ligament is the first structure to be released distally one can go up to gerdes tubercle remaining away from the ligament of patella and proximally the limit is superior pole because at superior pole you have superior lateral vessels this supply patella and one should avoid separating the skin from subcutaneous tissue if you make the patella taut one can see the lateral patella femoral ligament this needs to be released once you done everything and nothing much is available at your hand one small video where i use a small hemostasis and pass it beneath lateral femoral patella femoral ligament and release it using a cautery and one can very careful see the vessels at the superior pole of patella one should not cauterize them and if required one can go distally as well this is just to demonstrate it has its own complications like hematoma formation hemarthrosis and the list of complications if you do very extensive lateral release which includes avascular necrosis of patella as well patella clunk syndrome where there is a formation of fibrous nodule it's common with ps knee not so common nowadays but with the previous designs where there is a formation of fibrous nodule at the junction of patella and quadricep tendon and it when the, when the knee is brought from flexion to extension around 35 to 40 degree short of extension so it clunks out it is quite painful i have few cases in last 10 or 12 years and they behave well with debridement of this nodule arthroscopically other problem you can have as patellar osteonecrosis which can be cause of unexplained anterior pain this is patella at post op and one can see sclerotic patella it can lead to anterior knee pain or sometimes spontaneous fractures one case of mine this patient had she was an obese patient and she had laterally dislocated patella on both the sides we had to do extensive release and she was painful on the left side this seems to have undergone avascular necrosis quite dense as compared to the preoperative one can see that but it required extensive release so there can be patellar osteonecrosis as a cause of anterior knee pain another patient who presented to us quite late with fragmentation and in this we had to remove the patellar component so treatment various treatments mentioned in the literature conservative if not much pain circumferential denervation no 
personal experience with this. Partial total patellectomy did in one case, removal of patellar button and cement removal as a treatment of osteonecrosis. Thank you very much. If you, Professor, yeah. Professor Mashwari is doing it regularly. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, I just uh, wanted to ask you one question and um, I think that's something that a lot of people will find in their common practice and the question is, uh, how often do you find patellar crepitus in the knee? How frequent do you think it actually is? And does a, do you, sometimes to the extent that the patient may come in, sort of start complaining of the fact that, you know, I can hear it, it's painless. I mean, a painless crepitus, do you counsel the patient before the surgery? Is it uncommon? Is it common? What is your take on this? So, see, preoperatively, patient will not pay much attention to crepitus because he's in a lot of pain. How often do I see? In fact, I replace majority of patella. I don't leave them. But how often do I see? I see it quite often in unresurfaced patella. It, it, it makes noise. It might be painful as well. To my practice, I majority I replace. So the reason I have turned from no sound on replacer in first 1000 and now 100% replacer, one of the reverse convert. The reason is also this: they may not be painful, but they have a sound. It's like I get my car part replaced, and it is giving me sound. And the mechanic said, "Doctor, no problem. It's okay. It will work. It goes in my head." For me, when you replace the knee, no sound, no pain, walking very well, maybe less movement, but every time you get up from the chair, it is a sound, it's bothersome. So just for that purpose, I replace pedal. Okay. Agreed. Any other question? I have I have few of uh, anterior knee pain with replaced patella as well. It, is, it doesn't eliminate altogether. Yeah, sometime and if left. So, so if I can, yeah. I can just, I can just comment to what you just said. <laughs> so not replacing the patella and replacing the patella has equal results. The reason is, if you don't replace the patella properly, it has its own problems. Oh yes. So if you replace patella, it has to be replaced very meticulously, very oh, well. Yes. Now, uh, at the end, if it is like, now the take-home message should be, you can resurface. You need. You Cannot, need not resurface, it depends upon the patient to patient and surgeon how your practice is, how your patients feel or feel comfortable based on that. Both are good but the only thing is certain, certain in, implants are like patella friendly, particularly PS knees you have to be little careful and some pa in inflammatory conditions the patella is too small, females too small, too thin, you have to be little careful because after resurfacing also you will face some problems, so you have to be very careful. Yeah. Thank you, Professor. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Now, once there is one announcement. There is a poster presentation there. And I think those who have presented the posters will reach to the posters at around 4 o'clock for the jury educating. Now, we are start with the new session. Every time you won't get a virgin knee, there are many things done previously. And it is not as easy to do it as the simple knee. And I don't find any worthy person, that Dr. Narendra, whether to moderate this session. Always, you know, very tricky, but we have excellent speakers in this session. First of all, uh, let me call on stage uh, Dr. Raj Kumar, and he is going to talk about unhappy patients after TKR. Yeah, unhappy. Total knee replacement patient. So, uh, when is the, we all, uh, in all the meetings, we all say, discuss how to do a good total knee replacement, how long the implant will survive, how, will to, how to reduce the pain, so all those things, how to balance it. But in spite of achieving everything with robot or without robot, achieving everything after a total knee re replacement, TKR, patients are unhappy. I'll just try to take you through what exactly might be the reason, cause. So figuring out why there are unhappy patients, it's not going to be easy at all. Definitely it is not easy for anybody, the <coughs> senior most surgeon to the junior most, we have to keep searching for the exact reason. 
So, but after total knee replacement, the complications are like infection, instability, malalignment, so many complications are there. Whatever might be the complication, both patient and the surgeon are unhappy. So, nobody is um, happy with these complications. But if you look at this x-ray, 64-year-old female, medial side, mild varus, osteophytes, total knee replacement done, good alignment, everything, patient moving well. But if you ask this patient, sometimes she might say, no, no, I'm not happy. Good ROM, good implant, good alignment, everything done, but still the patient might say, I am not happy. So, what exactly is the reason why the patient is telling that she is unhappy, she or he? So, physically well-functioning knee, knee, but patient is unhappy. So, highlights might, it highlights the inherently subjective and undoubtedly the multifactorial nature of dissatisfaction. That is the most important thing. So, it means that it is multifactorial. The numbers are going up, as everybody are telling, it is predicted the numbers will go up. So, the literature says it is 20% unhappy or dissatisfied, but with all these kind of trainings, I don't think this 20% is really true. Actually speaking, maybe 5% or 7%. Patients might be unhappy nowadays with all this so much importance for good outcomes. So, Patient satisfaction has become an important outcome measure. So, how to say whether this patient TKR is successful? We have to measure the patient satisfaction. If the patient is satisfied, leave about the implant alignment. It might be varus, valgus, whatever it is. Today morning we had a lengthy discussion that I will put it in 2 degrees varus and valgus and say yes, it is good. But whether the patient is satisfied or not, that is the most important thing. So, many scores, they focus on pain, function, recreational activity, knee-related quality of life, all those things. But how we rate a successful total knee, whether the surgeon might think that he has done a good job, but the patient is unhappy. Why? Because both differ and they correlate in a different way. For patient, he might correlate it in a different way, for a surgeon it might. So the functional outcome scores do not necessarily correlate this surgeon's uh, uh, technique or the patient satisfaction, how? So the patient reported pain and functional scores, that is the prompts are the most important thing to judge the satisfactory level of a patient. So these are nowadays being more and more widely used and to assess how good the patient is satisfied. So our understanding of dissatisfaction is limited. Why? Because there is no focused research on this satisfaction level. So we need to use more and more prompts so that is where the limitations are there. Look at the uh, literature, if you see, if you search, it would be advantage if patients are who are likely to be dissatisfied. So we have to, if we have a tool to predict how much this patient will be satisfied, then we can make a good uh, outcome measure and say this patient is satisfied. So a lot of literature which says, and if you go in detail, I have concluded in these are, might be the reasons why a patient is uh, dissatisfied. What are those? Socio-demographic, pre-operative, intra-operative and post-operative. In these four verticals, if you look at, let us see what exactly might be the reason. The socio-demographic factors, advanced age, BMI and living alone, these factors adds uh, points for dissatisfaction. So if you look at the study, they say that whenever the patient is really markedly obese, and if he is living alone, and if he is like, if they are not socially active, for those patients when you do, they might not be happy. So physiological age, more predictive than chronological age. Fitter and more active patients have higher expectations. Patients living alone are highly unsatisfied. So you have to look into this. It might look a very ordinary point. It might look what is there in this, but still it has got so many important uh, measures. So, preoperative factors, knee function scores, mental health, pain in other joints and arthritis changes. So, this is the second vertical, that is the preoperative factors. We have to look in how much is the knee function. We, we don't look at the knee function score, preoperative score. We look at the postoperative. So, we have to really t spend time and assess the knee function score, the mental health and also other joint pain. So, we don't consider, okay, see the knee, okay, whereas go and do the correction, put in an implant. So, other joints and that arthritic stage. So, if you look at the preoperative scores, these scores are there, but they not really give that assessment of the function. 
So pre-op Umax score increases the risk of dissatisfaction by 2.4 times and a higher correlation between PROM and dissatisfaction. So we have to use the PROM scores preoperatively. That is more important. We look at only the Womax scores and uh, Oxford Nisa City scores. So we have to customize the PROM score and then find out which is useful for us and use that PROM score as the preoperative score so that we can use that also as the postoperative and see what are the problems. So poor mental status and depression prior to surgery is associated with this. How many of us go and talk to the patient, spend time with the patient preoperatively, how much they are suffering with depression. It is not easy in our practice. So much of volume is big, but still these are all the points which the literature says we have to look into that. So depression influences the patient's perception. So our next is the vertical is the other joints. We take long leg x-rays, but we have, even for a total knee, we have to look at the spine, how bad it is. The patient's spine might be bad and we might miss that. Because of that, the patient, even good aligned TKR, the patient will not be happy because of the spine problem. So we have to look at other joints. Dissatisfied patients after TKR with spinal symptoms get better after spinal surgery. So we have to take into this also into consideration. Then arthritic stage, everybody will accept less severe degenerative changes. You go and do a TKR, patient is not happy. So 2.1 times, literature says 2.1 times more likely to be satisfied if the arthritic stage is very early. So preoperative arthritis level is also, that means what? You cannot in stretch out your indications for a total knee and then expect the patient to be happy after total knee replacement. So more the severity, better the satisfactory. So look at these examples. These patients, even if you put the tray a little bit in a mal alignment, they are going to be happy because the pre-arthritic stage is so severe, they are able to walk comfortably after surgery and the patient is so happy. So patients are very happy after a total knee. Post TKR, very happy patient. These patients are very, very happy. Mild arthritis, the most, even in the morning session we discuss, these patients are really challenged to do a total knee. How much better you do, you, they are not satisfied. So patient will be unhappy after a total knee, these kind. What are the intraoperative? I searched the literature extensively for this and found out that the lesser the bone resection, joint stability, particularly the medial joint stability, accurate coronal alignment of the femoral component. If we get these three things, patients are happy. How they are happy? That is a different story. But try to keep the cuts minimal, get the medial joint stability, and also the accurate coronal alignment of the femoral component. All these patients are happy. Probably with robot, we will be able to achieve this. That is why patient early satisfaction level is good. So accurate coronal alignment of the femoral component, all patients are happy. Then comes the last one, post-operative factors. This vertical, pain, function, expectation not met, longer hospital stay and complication. If any of these things are there, patient is not happy. Remember that, very, very clear. So you have to address the pain. What is that? You have to address the patient's post-operative pain. That first two, three days is very important. Whatever modality, it is up to you. But discuss with the anesthetist, get that pain uh, managed so the patients are happy. If the patient is not happy in the first few weeks, then they are chronically unhappy. So that is what is important. Successful, good pain management in the perioperative period, patients are happy. So 43 to 48 percent, if they use NSAIDs or opioids, even after 30 days, they are always unhappy. So these patients are always unhappy. Movement elicited pain, yes. Gabapent, opioids and all, not much of help. So pregabalin, yes, more effective. Coming to function, function undoubtedly doubtedly plays a very important role in satisfaction. So try to get the post-operative function as much as possible. Then comes the expectation, very, very important. Patient's expectation is, might be Himalayan level but you have to talk to them and tell them this is what I can do. If you are not able to tell them that this much only in my hands is possible. So patient expectations are highly correlated with satisfaction after TKR. So they, they expect so many things but you tell them what is good and what is not good. So 51 to 56 per dissatisfied patients, they have no adverse symptoms from their knee, largely attributed to unrealistic expectations. It is very much uh, um, reported in the literature, I have seen in my patients that 
the more you talk to them, more you counsel them preoperatively, they are satisfied. In fact, initially they might resist, but after surgery, they know that this is going to come. That means what? There will be pain first few days. There are, these are the movements that you, can, you should not do. These are the things you can do. So they know that and they are prepared. So doctor's new problem is what? All these, so much of expectations, WhatsApp, uh, social media, all those things, uh, patients read in detail and then they come and expect from the surgeon postoperatively. So the expectation increases. So we have to be very careful. That is why preoperatively you have to talk to them. So already we have discussed in the morning. So uh, whether this robot is going to make the patient is happy, they might get all the uh, perioperatively, we get the proper cuts and alignment, but whether make the patient happy, at present, we, the answer is no, we have to wait and see. So what really will make? Are you addicted to unhappiness? The mind matters. That is what has been proven. People talk so much about this. So we have to train the mind to be happy. Always remember, everybody are, we might say that I am happy, unhappy, whatever it is, but if we train our mind to be happy, then the patient also will be happy. So, in, to summarize, targeted discussion between the surgeon and the patient to identify patient's reasonable expectations. So, pre-operative patient education is the key factor. To conclude, important predictors of dissatisfaction are depression, poor pre-operative knee score, stage of arthritis, spine involvement, post of pain and swelling, and finally, the expectations not met. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Rajkumar. You can actually join here on the stage. Yeah.